Lily. Lily? You got... Betrayed me? This manner has never been on your side. Not even once. And Heathcliff, I find it rather vexing that you would use that expression, betrayal. Heathcliff slowly approaches Nelly. I can't imagine the level of betrayal he must be feeling. You tell me. Tell me why. You've really changed, Heathcliff. The old you wouldn't have bothered to ask even a single question before swinging that club at my skull. I'm asking because it's you. You really have to destroy even our childhood. Heathcliff, what are you most afraid of? I wasn't afraid of the ghost that Miss Catherine claimed to have seen. I wasn't afraid of the tempest that sometimes shook this manor, or how violent Mr. Henley would get when he was drunk. Until one day, I became afraid. I became afraid of an old woman whose heart and body were aged beyond their years. I was that old woman. An old woman who suffered because of you, Heathcliff, and... Uh, because of you, Heathcliff, and Miss Catherine in every world. Round and round, you and Miss Catherine went, both plagued by hatred, the misunderstandings, the terrible obsessions, and I, in every world, was always dragged under the wheel of destruction, suffering and struggling to my last haggard, early breath, again and again and again. The worst thing, was that all of us were ignorant of our doomed fates. I hadn't even an inkling of that the two of you were consuming every minute of my life, little by little. So I showed it to her, too. I told her that it was a mirror shard that showed the beholder whatever their heart wished to see. The glass shards can make countless cracks in the hearts of humans. It shakes the very foundation of one's existence. The knowledge of mere worlds can suck the meaning out of every struggle, everything that one has worked for in their entire life, and plants the seeds of doubt in their hearts. Doubts that the very path they one seeks to take in their life, it's enough to make them attempt to meddle with the ship, with the selves in other worlds, believing that it is the right thing to do. If someone had shown Nelly that mirror, then they must have been, that must have been precisely their intended outcome. Yet, a mirror technology that allows for such high degree of interactivity must be then everything began to unravel all on its own. She conversed with someone on the other end of the mirror for a long time, someone who was suffering just as much as she was. Then the laboratory began to take its shape. Oh, she must, must have known even in her wildest dreams. She never once doubted me, even as she closed her eyes forevermore in that coffin. As naive as any other sheltered child, a caged bird. I suppose it was only naivety, but also her own temperament. She was the kind of person who always had to be the center of everything. But please, do not deny every memory we've shared together. The pity I felt for you as they abused you, wishing that you would live your best life, a life better than anyone else's, were all my honest feelings. Honestly, that feels... almost close. Because I originally had posed that Nelly might be involved in wanting to find a world where he and Catherine could be together, but it's not entirely off, it's, but it's more skewed into rather than a 
world to help them. She was looking for a world to help herself from the... Maybe the best word would be abuses of them? I mean, Nellie's a servant. She doesn't get necessarily the best treatment. She basically lived to serve. But it seems, at least in this world, that her <laughs> version, the version of <laughs> Butler that she was compared to, like, Josephine, seemed more free. But maybe not. <laughs> Can you, are you showing anything you don't like? Slash. Okay. Hmm. Also, by this time, um, real shoes. Uh, Nelly Maid ID has been fully revealed, which makes me so happy. It looks so good. Honestly, one of my. And I can't believe. Freaking issues coming with it. Like double dose. Two and one. Yeah, this is okay. Well, I don't have any lust. Can anyone take it? Without... Wait, what? Okay, okay you're a favorite on it. I think we actually can build up dominating there. Okay. Yes, forward. So, should I kill? so far. I think the two things for this one was um, reducing HP and helping the turn count. Is that not exactly? Yuga no moon sound me, Kideaki so. To get to Huggin. I mean, this goes well with his dagger. Color it's held in air. I'm a cook, who can get there. Is no, my chick, Jeffrey Ocean. <gasps> Freaking wild. A uh, woman's stand ends before us. Her body and mind are spent, weighing down by, weighed down, bleh, weighed down by time that's sinking into her oblivion of history. Pride advantage. You're very high. Yo, Heathcliff. Thank you. Heathcliff approached Nelly. There was an odd desire in Nellie's eyes. Perhaps it was envy, or perhaps it was anticipation. She... 
gave me a mirror most beautiful, most alluring. It was as gorgeous as a lovely manicure. Nelly Shudder caught by an ineffable emotion. She mutters in a cold, detached voice. There, I saw the kind of life that was laid out before me. He could have leapt backward away from the sudden metallic noise, but it was too late. The chains that exploded from Nelly's suitcase wrapped around Heathcliff's arm. I refuse to be bound by you and the miss. It's done. Though Heathcliff movements may be restricted, maybe there is a way to use that against Nelly. Heathcliff gained two damage. Up. Hmm. It didn't. Use the raise attack weight of certain attack skills. Oh, I'm guessing because it's attached from them? It's not great. Okay, that's good. Okay, it's just I get some hugging. This would go even smoother had I brought <coughs> so, like some glare. <laughs> like my blade so lineage and glare. Grant, he's not leveled, so maybe not. I might be just doing better for my passive. Okay, you're not far, but I also don't know if that's close enough. Focus on Heath. Can Heath clash? It, it he can. And then it's also. Okay, you can take that. Real clash with this one then. And I don't have balance any helpless. You have no, you do not have affinity weaknesses. So we'll just do that one. Fendan, sorry. Miles might get staggered if she loses the coin flip. Great, Nelly might get staggered. That bar is looking closer than I thought it was. Okay, Nelly got staggered. Jeffrey Oshu kills it again. She's doing so well. <gasps> Miss Catherine was difficult from time to time, but I do not wish to deny even the times we've spent together. Even I even miss the late Mr. Earnshaw Sr. from time to time. No, I never lived a life full of hate and animosity. 
I am just struggling desperately to change my destiny. To get here, I worked myself to the bone. Trained and worked harder than anyone else to become a chief butler. Move. You still endeavor to reach the rooftops. I must tell you that it is a fruitless effort. That other Heathcliff is already there. And that is how this tale shall end. This is the better ending, isn't it? You two couldn't even summon the smallest courage to talk to one another. Oh, Nelly got sick of the... It is kind of the reverse of what I originally said of... Rather than trying to find a world where they actually end up together, she got sick of a world where they <laughs> didn't talk to one another, so it's just like, screw it. I'm making a life that will hopefully be better for my own future by removing this from the equation. Stop it. You two always believed everything I told you, without even one iota of doubt. Every little twist, every little nudge I made in my tales, taken as truth. <gasps> oh, Nelly burned the letters. No, miss, he hasn't sent you any letters, though I am quite certain that he must be living a good, good life somewhere out there. I'll send the invitation, miss. It's still that same Heathcliff who didn't even bother to write you, but when he sees this, he will have no choice but to return to this manor. Well, I don't recall her ever opening a letter. Seriously, once she ha has her mind set on something, no one could convince her otherwise. No one. You two admired more people than you could imagine into your business. Yet you do not even talk to one another, nor do you ask questions. Nelly... That feels a little contradictory just because... You're saying they don't talk to one another, but he is actively sending letters and yeah, it's not talking in person and actually airing things out, but it's like something is communicating in some way. Did you even read the letters? Do you really believe that you even deserve to move on? With such slothness, slothfulness? No more. This tale ends here. Expression of love. Hmm. Nelly was right. Heathcliff the Earl King had already disappeared from the steered into the rooftops. The only chance Virgilis gave us, the awakening I managed with my clock, the very last of Heathcliff's hopes. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> over. <laughs> Endless vortex of colors mixed into a sludge, <laughs> a splash of gray paint over the heart that once cleaned violet. A splash of blood red paints, splashes of faded colors, again and again until there was nothing but blackness. Unseen by all, unnecessary to anyone, the color of pitch black night. The colors of the back streets. A uh, power outage? Huh? Where did Heathcliff go? Yeah, he disappeared all of a sudden. What are you talking about? I'm right here. A predictable ending, is it not? He returned to the back streets, the place where our dear Heathcliff belongs. Poor Heathcliff, once again he turns his tail, tasting nothing but defeat and despair. Stop it. Stop it, I don't want to hear any more of it. Pitiful, isn't he? 
He would not have changed one bit, no matter how many times he spent in your company. Look at Heathcliff and the Earl. Heathcliff the Earl King. Heathcliff the Devil. The very same end that awaits Heathcliff. I disagree. You probably can't hear a thing I'm saying, but I still do. Because... I'm hurting. I don't even want to be here anymore. So I must marry Linton in the end. Because it would degrade me to marry Heathcliff now. Oh, bloody hell. It's this memory again. Kathy and Nellie must have been talking about me in that room. I have to get out of here. If I had to stay and listen, my heart will crack and fall apart until it completely shatters. And this bloody clock noise in the back. It could only mean that time's passing no matter how much I suffer. But would waiting, letting time pass, change anything? What difference would it? Fine! I'll wait a little, so shut up and... Marrying Linton would give me the means to help Heathcliff. I could make him a better person. So he must never know the immense love I have for him. <gasps> no, this time, I don't want to shut this open door. I'm still scared, terrified even, but... Kathy, I'm sorry. I've disappointed you. Because I was too afraid to hear your true feelings. I know this future is a future that will never come true, not for us. I wrecked everything with my hesitation. I hurt more than just us, I hurt Nellie too. I have to start fixing the things I've wrecked. Because I don't want my Heathcliff to live the rest of his life in regret. That is why, despite everything, I want Heathcliff to forge on to the rooftops. <gasps> Those flowers bloom in places like desolate moors or steep cliff sides. So they may appear more lonely than anything else in the world. Do you want to know why I still love this flower the most? All other flowers lose their color and fade as they wither away. But this flower, even as it withers and wilts, remains the same color. So when you're gone, I will dry these flowers and decorate my room with them. Huh? What? Like make rings of them flowers? Don't say something so foolish. Why would I ever leave you? So stupid. I never once realized what she meant by those words. Everything you've ever said, Catherine, was an expression of love. Boy, I'm back. Heathcliff? Where the hell did you go? You blipped out of existence when the lightning struck and... Are you okay, Heathcliff? No, it hurts. It still hurts like hell, but... I will move past you and make my way to the rooftop, Nelly. You're... What? Heathcliff the Earl King will not be my future. You, him, you both had access to every knowledge, but made the same choices anyway. Not me. I'm gonna make a different choice. Thank you so much for looking after us, Nelly. It must have been very hard. Among the three individuals mentioned in Miss Catherine's will, since Henley and Linton are now both clearly deceased, it can be said that at least on paper, the ownership of Wuthering Heights has been transferred to Heathcliff. I'll give you a new future, Nelly. I'll give you freedom. So start writing as you will. Write your own tale, or whatever else it is that you wish to do. With that, Heathcliff left Nellie behind and began making his way to the rooftop. Nellie collapsed to the floor, making an odd noise that sounded like a mixture of laughter and sobbing. I'm free to go? I've been free? Then I can, I can finally... What the hell are you lot doing down there, tapping about? 
someone up. For the first time, I really have no idea what you're thinking right now. Thinking? I don't really think that hard, mate. I just clearly know what I have to do. That's all. Yeah, Dante, you expect Heathcliff to have a, a thought? Brooklyn Heathcliff awaits us on the rooftop, just as Faust expected. The powerful and oppressive energy and surra that surrounded him only had grown more ferocious since our last encounter. Then must be because of the golden ball and the pure form of humanity. Heathcliff watches us stumbling up the stairs, and through our exhaustion, he lowers Catherine's coffin to the rooftop floor. What a sorry ending to this tale, is it not? You have no idea the lengths I've gone to destroy both Henley and Lyndon, how much I have pushed myself to the brink again and again. This is my own heaven. It is finally within my reach. Heaven. This shite is your idea of heaven. Look again, you're in hell. Right in the middle of it. When I heard the news of Catherine's passing, I began to see her face in all things. Even my very own face brought back her memories. Everything in the world began in an unending reminder of who Catherine once was. A reminder of the fact that she once existed only to be forever lost because of me. So to breathe, to let my heart beat, I had to think of nothing but that singular wish. That burning, unchanging desire, my wish. To kill every Heathcliff in every world? Yes, that singular wish is the ultimate proof of my love. Through my campaign, I have seen so many versions of Heathcliff. Some grew wrathful, some begged for mercy for their lives. In the end, they all admitted that they ha all had to perish for the good of Catherine and willingly forfeited their lives. I found no pleasure in my work. How could I, when I made it my mission to slay those poor wretched souls, when all of them died so alone, unloved, hugged by all that is living by the world? Did you know that no one ever weeps for Heathcliff's death? So the task falls to me to bury them. We shed my tears for them. Yet only silence shall attend and my own demise. No, your methods is all wrong. Of course I would have given anything to make Catherine happy, anything but... Even you, who saw the possibilities of every world, missed something. What do you mean? You said that in every world, Catherine and Heathcliff were destined to be miserable, didn't you? But we could have been happy. We just missed that smallest key to happiness. No, no such world exists. Because of me, no, us, because of our existence, Catherine will... Buddy how I'm telling you that it's got nothing to do with our existence. The problem was that I wanted to believe that it was. All I had to do, all I had to do was get over my embarrassment, that little fear. I just had to scrounge up the smallest morsel of courage to open the door and talk to her. But how will you prove your theory when we have nothing left to prove it with? When my Catherine is long gone. Right. I can't change the past, like you said. I can't prove it to you either. Maybe none of this matters in the end, and Catherine might never wake up again no matter what I do, but... I'm here anyway, on this rooftop. Do, do you understand what that means? You, me, we're both wretches, I understand that. But... I refuse to break like you did, leaping from world to world, seeking to kill everyone that you deem to be the cause of that misery. 
No matter how broken my heart has become, your speech rings hollow, Heathcliff, for the outcome is already decided. I will end your life and leap over to the next world to do the same. Then what the hell are you waiting for? Heathcliff pulled all the golden ball from the roof, roof of the manor, where it was installed as a lightning round. <laughs> your struggle is meaningless. I cannot not destroy. You cannot destroy the golden ball. I can't destroy it, no. But I can stop it from working. You mean to kill me? You. No, I will stab myself just as you wished. You're... What? <laughs> What? <laughs> Heathcliff? <laughs> I see. I don't exactly understand why, but the skull ball being endued with the light is a necessary part of your plan, isn't it? What if I just drained its powers? That'd cock up your grand scheme, wouldn't it? Won't it? Wait, how do you even know that, Heathcliff? I ain't educated, but you know I'm good at sniffing out these things. Heathcliff? <laughs> Catherine? I'm back. Please open the door. Wh why did you just stab yourself? Is that how you wanted this to end? Because I need Kathy in every corner of this mare to hear my call. From what I've seen, the golden bow connects the heart hearts together. Look, I'm flying by the seat of my trousers here. What are you... Catherine has become Wuthering Heights itself. I don't understand how that happened. But if Kathy, if she saw the same mirror that Nelly and the gift peered into, and if her heart was the same as mine all along, I feel like I'd know what kind of choice she'd make. Now that I think back on it, from the moment we set our foot but upon this manor, Wuthering Heights kept pushing me away while the diary continued to soothe me. We were never honest, Kathy. I... both of us. Heathcliff, what are you talking about? The diary flips through its pages until it comes to stop on the last page. Would you like to hear a story, Heathcliff? Long, long, long time ago, Josephine told me a little tale. She said that there is a deep ancient river flowing beneath this manor. Every architect said that this was not a good place to build anything, let alone a house. That nothing should ever be built atop this hill. Wuthering Heights was built here nonetheless, over the unseen... Hypogean River? Ever since I was a child, I saw the ghost of my late mother wandering the halls of this manor. Nelly, can't you see that ghost? I told you, miss, there's no such thing as ghosts. Why don't you take your nap like I asked you to? Oh, mistress. Thankfully, I wasn't the only one who was seeing ghosts. I, Josephine, knew that you would one day return to our side. That the river flowing beneath these lands would bring your grace back to this manor. That, should my duties at this manor be complete, you would allow me to drink the river's waters. I have repeatedly seen that vision as I grew up. After Heathcliff left me, after I'd lost every will to live, Nelly brought me a mirror. Miss, I found an interesting mirror. It shows you some fascinating things. I suppose it is a magical mirror of sorts. I thought you might enjoy such an invention. Is that in that mirror, I saw the infinite variations of Heathcliff and I. I pulled Heathcliff to the other abyss of desolation. He grew cold and unhappy, mired in an endless cycle of misfortune. It was as though his fate was already written to be miserable. No matter what he did, he would always meet a wretched end. Do you see that? I see another ghost. 
아가씨, 네, 상태가 많이 안 좋아요. You are still very ill. Please do not let at the chill wind sicken you further. Why does that ghost weep so tragically, and why does she appear so familiar? I, I must gaze into the mirror again, Nelly. I wish to find that single strand of possibility where Heathcliff can be happy. So I gaze into that mirror night and, and after night, night after night, until blood began to stream down my cheeks in places in place of tears. At the end of the ceaseless wailing, I found the Catherine who tasted the deepest despair. You are... No other Catherine weeps as terribly as you do. Not in any other worlds I have seen. Because in this world, I am Heathcliff's murderer. We were just like you, desperately searching through every world we peered past the mirror. But in no world are Heathcliff and I together in happiness. Our tale always ends in tragedy. This thus suffering is all that remains. I have nothing to live for alone. I have no reason to go on. Why can't Heathcliff be happy? Why can't any Heathcliff be allowed? Even an ounce of happiness. There is but one answer. That we are the cause of his misery. Because Catherine exists in what is what brings misfortune to Heathcliff. Every Heathcliff is miserable because of me. If I were to no longer exist in any world, will every Heathcliff in every world find happiness? Yes, he will. So it's not too late. For the sake of every remaining Heathcliff in every world, please invite us to your world beyond. So that we may kill you first. And we will go on to the next to kill the Catherine of a different world again and again. Then, only then can Heathcliff reach his own heaven, the heaven where I no longer exist. Nope. It felt as though I was freed from, from a heavy yoke. It felt as though this was precisely what I was meant to do. Because I love every Heathcliff. Because he deserves to be happy. I have done as you ordered. I have used some of my connections in the back streets. To bankrupt Mr. Hindley. Last I heard, he gambled everything he had away. I used Nelly, who asked her acquaintances to bankrupt my brother. Then I took the ownership of Wuthering Heights from him. Don't worry about the results. We've done some similar experiments in the past. It's all work out. It'll all work out as long as the laboratory is ready. Certainly, the laboratory will be completed as you have, completed as you have requested. The price is not a matter of concern. And, like I told you repeatedly, this message will overwrite your identity with that of another. Which is to say that your body should be freed of all consciousness, free of all consciousness. We have learned in one of our previous experiments that full, full and complete identities can be summoned only when the body is empty. I installed a massive laboratory into our basement to invite Catherine to our world. I acquired the golden ball with Linton's help, however. To summon a fully intact identity, it is an incredible power-consuming process. Procedure. A single golden ball won't be enough to power it. Lucky for you, we have recently procured ourselves a golden ball. This golden ball, once installed on the roof of your manor, will collect all the necessary energy and relay it to the golden ball inside the fact in the laboratory. Wow, so this is happening and potentially being... I don't know. I can't remember. It was like so long ago for first chapter, but like first golden first chapter golden ball failure is potentially in this manner the one we failed to get
could potentially be the one that was in Herman Gates. Thank me. You Thank are me so kind. Oh. What kind of payment do you ask in return? Not monetary, that's for certain. Instead, allow us to make a dough. That is all I ask. A dough? Yes, a pure, uncontaminated dough. Invite me, please. Please. Hmm. The experiment should be complete soon. Nelly? I no longer fear the ghost, because all fear stems from the ignorance of its origin. Maybe that is why I was so afraid of talking to Heathcliff, because I could not know nor could I understand his ever-distant heart. What I had I thought to be ghosts were just us from other worlds, suffering in wretched pain, yet wandering the manner still determined to end my life. Now, after the lightning strikes seven times upon your coffin, the path to the other world will open, summoning the Catherine you want from the other world here. I am certain that Linton will be happy, because you are doing this for me, whom you love so much. Once this coffin closes, that is it. You won't ever open your eyes again. I know. But this is not the end. I will always be watching over you, wherever you may be. Your word is my command. Everything shall be as you willed. Sweet dreams, my love. Oh, a dough of such high purity can become um, pretty much anything. When I sink lies beyond that dough, however, it's something more primordial. Something at the far beginnings of all things. But for you, I present a different Heathcliff. Not your Heathcliff, who left you without a word and doesn't care to, doesn't even care to return. A Heathcliff who exists for Catherine, and only Catherine. And the river that flows beneath your manor will be a great help to both of us. It may be that your consciousness isn't lost forever because the, the deepest river arrests them from moving on. Perhaps you would have a front seat to everything that is to transpire. Heathcliff who exists just for me. What are you talking about? And why am I watching all of this happen? Where am I? Can anyone hear me? Don't you worry, we will make sure that the summoning ritual is a resounding success. And just in case you forgot, remember to hold steadfast. Remember that all of this is for the good of Heathcliff, whom you love so much. The clock turns to revive Heathcliff, who stabbed himself with a golden ball. Catherine? Yes, Eventually, Catherine, from the distant world, is slowly pulled from the coffin and the other Heathcliff is carrying. The golden ball that impaled Heathcliff began to return to whence it came, back to where Heathcliff first tore it from, like it was meant to be there. There's a lot of things to process. Okay.